it's like the what was it what was the year that the lights came on for josh allen uh or you know the, the where it's like holy crap he threw 17 interceptions but he threw 35 touchdowns Welcome into the Hot Read Podcast for Wednesday, July the 11th. I'm your host, Easton Fries, Director of Published Content here at BroadwaySportsMedia.com. We're also brought to you by the 440 Podcast Network. I'm joined, as always, by producer JT. JT, how are you? I'm good. I'm having a very stress-free day, which it couldn't be the more opposite from you right now. <laughs> uh, over the last 24 hours, like the, the, two, the difference between us on this show coming into today's show, which I guess we'll fill in Danny because he's, we'll hi Danny, about, you're here. Hello. I've talked to him about uh, but well, we're yeah. going to, we're going to talk about this, but like we are having just totally different lifestyles right now. Yeah. We'll get into all of that. We're joined by uh, Danny Kelly of the <laughs> ringer fantasy football show amongst other ringer things. Danny, it's good to have you back third time here on the hot read podcast. How are you, my Woo-hoo. friend? Uh, I'm doing excellent, G- getting ready to be geared up for this season already, which is kind of crazy. But um, yeah, yeah, looking forward to it already. It's, it's fun. It is fun. It's a fun time of year. Uh, we're not, you know, you're not to the point of the pre-off season where you're burnt right. out. There's right. there's nothing worse than when you get to like August 23rd and it's like, can we just play some <laughs> games? Mother. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, it's uh, but we're not there yet. It's, we're excited about the, the training camp part still. So we're going to be talking about that. And it's all fantasy all the time today on the show because you're the fantasy guy, Danny. And we uh, we're, frankly, we're just looking for excuses to have you on the show because we like talking to you. So we're like, let's just <laughs> talk about the thing he talks about. Um, I appreciate yeah, it. Th- things are crazy. Uh, I almost it was almost just you and JT today, Danny, because my wife and I almost went to the hospital last night because she's having a baby. And like that, yeah, almost, I was going to ask, is yeah. it you have like a false alarm type of. False yeah, I might leave the show in the middle of the show today. Like, I, I don't know. <laughs> So all yeah. of my plans are on hold. I don't know what I'm doing. Um, Could be very. Maybe might be here any second. So yeah, just keep your eye on the phone. Uh, mm-hmm. And I totally understand. Yeah. Totally Can you imagine? I missed the birth yeah. of my child talking to you two <laughs> idiots just talking about fantasy football. It's okay, just it's okay. My phone. You'll. Um, you'll- we can talk about the well, while you're here. We could either have a really nice show where we talk about the Titans or. You could leave and then all hell breaks loose. And I just go on my rant about how I think Michael Pittman's going to be a top five wide receiver. I start talking about the <laughs> Met and everything just goes off the rails. So right. I want all the, yeah, happen. all the takes give them. Well, we're in a, we're in a fantasy football league together. You, the, mm-hmm. the Danny Kelly invitational league, um, that, that you are gracious enough to give us a spot in and that there's a group chat that has just evolved into, I don't know why, but it's just a Mets chat now. Um, yeah, yeah. So there's it's that JT is JT and Scott Barrett are the two Mets fans. And that's just like their only place for talking about the Mets. <laughs> no one else anywhere <laughs> wants to talk about the Mets. So they just like, can you guys maybe too. like start your own DM or yeah, something? get a like, room? Jesus. Um, well, it's, it's that. And it's the fact that everybody else in that chat is like Phillies or Braves fans, which are like the two direct rivals. And they just love to like harp on us and how bad are we you are a baseball and- guy, Danny or no? No, not really. I used okay. to be, but you know, I was a Mariners fan forever. And so back when baseball was the only sport in America back yeah. in your thirties or something, the Mariners um, okay. ground, ground me down. I just couldn't really stay, stay connected to it as much as I probably should. I, I, I stay connected th- to it through my group chat friend, like my friend's group chats. Right. Um, and so I like know what's going on and I know like people's uh, sort of like the pulse on people's excitement or whatever, but don't actually don't, watch the games. Yeah, that's kind of games. that's yeah. kind of me as well. I just watch Braves games and that's about it. Um, we're talking about football today. We're going to talk about the Titans and some fantasy relevant players, of which there are a couple, which uh, with the Titans, you know, not always the case, but they've, they've got some, right. some dudes to talk about. And then we're going to zoom out to the AFC South. Plenty of uh, fantasy relevant guys uh, across the division. And then we're going to zoom out even further to some some other things in the league that we find interesting enough to talk about today. So if you're joining us Thanks. live, we appreciate you being here. Do us a favor. Make sure you're watching on Broadway Sports Media's YouTube page. It's Broadway Sports Media on YouTube. Find this live stream there and you can join Sobros Network and D-Good in the comment section. Glory Day Sports, all you guys, we appreciate you guys. would love for you to be a part of today's conversation over there. Um, make sure you're subscribed and all of those things. Well, hit like all the, all the buttons that you can help us out with. Okay, let's start with the Titans, fellas. And um, I feel like we have to start with Will, Will Levis and, uh, mm. you know, uh, a, a muscly Mayo man. Uh, I, I love listening Billy to Jeans. you guys. Billy Jeans. I love listening <laughs> to you guys talk about him on, on y'all's show, Danny, because it's just, um, it's all about how yoked he is. Is he too vascular? Big to, right. Yeah. Vascular. That's the word you guys use. <laughs> uh, so veiny. Yeah. He really is. And it's, it's that way in person as well. He just is, um, He's a nice guy. Don't get me wrong, but it is like very Jim bro when you're around him. Uh, <laughs> yeah. 
you you talked in an episode in the recent past about um, value at the quarterback position. Um, and he's a guy that is is going uh, on y'all's rankings. QB 24 on Fantasy Pros, also QB 24, um, mm-hmm. 189 overall. I just want to talk about the the value of somebody like him. Obviously, he's not going to be a guy you're drafting to be your starter necessarily. Um, and in a one quarterback league, he may not even be rostered. But if you're playing in a two quarterback league or you're or in a dynasty league where you're trying to find value, uh, I just think that the history of a year two quarterback in a dramatic and, and this is the funny thing about you, you b- bourgeoisie bourgeoisie uh, national folks. You don't <laughs> on the on the pulse of the Titans. You guys, it's it's funny. Right. You guys talk about the Titans. Um, because some folks don't really know what's going on. And um, I, I do we like I, to, tr- we like to trigger people. You, you know. do. And you do a good job of it. And the Titans <laughs> to your credit, Titans fans are a fan base that uh, it, it is so easy to goad them on. You just have to say anything remotely. I uh, just look there, look askance in their direction and it will get them to be really upset. So it, it's partially yeah. on them as well. But it, this is a situation that really couldn't be any more improved from Mm -hmm. what he had to deal with last year. And that's not to say that um, it is a perfect situation around him this year. The offensive line is still very much a work in progress. Uh, The weapons are really nice, but some guys that are older, all all of these things where is it perfect? No, but is it a dramatic upgrade over last year? Will Levis and Deandre Hopkins. And like, that was the whole offense and everybody else is just kind of vibing. Ty J Spears was also there to like contribute uh, uh, at times. Yes, it is. And you've got Bill Callahan coaching the offensive line, all of these things that, could be significant future value. So I'll stop mm-hmm. yammering and let you go, Danny. What are your thoughts on vascular Will Levis going into the season? <laughs> well, the, I, you know, from a point of view of process, you have to absolutely love what the Titans have done in terms of, look, we drafted this guy. We got really good value on him in theory in the second round. He fell much further than people thought he would. Um, you know, there was a lot of indications that he was going to go in the top 10, top five, and then he ended up falling to the second round. Just a number of variables kind of played played a part in that but um you have this really really cheap rookie quarterback with a lot of upside a lot of physical talent and they did exactly what like the nerd playbook would tell you to do which is upgrades an offensive line you know they used their first round pick on an offensive lineman jc latham that's a guy i like they went and got like arguably the best offensive line coach in the nfl which is you know kind of like a hidden piece of value too like i think maybe people nationally don't realize quite enough i think it's the biggest thing be. going for them on offense frankly and yeah people see it yeah and like especially for the type of quarterback that levis is where he you know in year one took too, too many sacks like held on the ball a little bit too long mm-hmm. um giving him some protection and giving him a little more continuity and just pr- you know protection up front is potentially massive 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 um for what he can do in year two and so um yeah they went out and spent big money they they and, and you know they threw around a lot of money to get calvin ridley um you know veteran receiver good route runner guy with a really solid hands like kind of all the things you want to check off in terms of a quarterback's best friend type of player uh deandre hopkins still there he's in, in the exact same mold like just throw it in his direction he's going to come down with it um they went and got Tyler Boyd, who is, you know, he's a role. He's at this point in his career, he's a role player, veteran guy. But again, mm-hmm. another just rock solid is going to be where he's supposed to be. You're not going to have to like teach him a whole new offense. Um, essentially playing in the exact same offense he played last year, or like very similar um, the last couple of years. And so, you know, from a on paper point of view, like this is everything that you would hope the Titans would do. Like I'm very intrigued with what Brian Callahan can bring. Obviously there's a lot of um, anecdotes and, and um, stories about how he teaches and how well he connects to the players and how, how big of an impact he's had on quarterbacks in the past. Obviously we haven't really, we don't have any like tangible evidence that he's a really good coach, but I think there's a lot of right. anecdotal um, narrative uh, reasons to believe that he could really make a huge impact here. And so, yeah. And and then of course they went and got two really, or they went and got Tony Pollard to pair with Tajay Spears. So I, I think, you know, that's going to be a really We're good one combo. Um, and so, you know, there's a world in which Will Levis has a massive outbreak, like breakout this year, outbreak, not outbreak, um, breakout. Sorry, the post COVID era. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Don't want to say it affects that. Affects um, everyone else. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Massive outbreak in like vascular. Too, too, everyone's mm-hmm. going to be really veiny. Um, no, I think there's a chance where he like really, really outplays what people are expecting just because circumstances, the coaching, the, you know, the upgraded offensive skill players, maybe the scheme um, is much better suited to what he wants to be doing and, and some of his strengths. Like 
you know, when I think of, of Levis, he's like a YOLO type of quarterback and, um, you know, yes. get some vertical, you know, get some vertical elements of this offense going, uh, protect him a little bit better. And you might be able to get a little stew going here. So uh, I'm cautiously optimistic. I, I think there are certainly ways that Levis could fail, uh, yeah. but I'm pretty excited to see how this goes. The, the critique that I hear most often that rubs me the wrong way. And again, there are many valid critiques of, uh, you know, this team and reasons why they, they like there's a ceiling on the season. The one that I'm hearing the most that I just I, I shake my head at is this idea where the, this people are kind of stuck in the past in the sense that like, yeah, Levis showed a lot of flash last year at times. And yes, they they put weapons around him that I, I like the individual pieces. Right. I really like DeAndre mm -hmm. Hopkins. I really like Calvin Ridley. I really like Calvin Boyd or Tyler Boyd as as individual pieces you can put around a young quarterback. But I don't know if he's going to be able to take advantage of those guys in this scheme you know, in an RPO um, uh, run heavy scale, like the, the idea that this is the Titans of the old, essentially. And I think when you look at Brian Callahan's resume coming in, you look at what he did in Cincinnati. I, I think the most interesting thing about last year, frankly, was the, the, the weeks that they had Jake Browning in the lineup where you could have reasonably expected the Bengals to change the, the identity of that offense significantly really pair it back, really play conservatively, you know, yeah. a lot of one read stuff, a lot of RPO, a lot of running the ball, pounding Joe Mixon. They didn't do that right. Weeks 12 through 18, Jake Browning was averaging uh, 19 uh, and change points per yeah. game, 266 yards per game, 11 touchdowns, seven interceptions. And this is Jake Browning. We're talking about who, you know, is not Will Levis for, for all of the failings of Will Levis and, and, and criticism, uh, skepticism there. Uh, I think anybody could agree that there's, there's more talent in what a little Will Levis than in a Jake Browning. So right. I, I, I think that's the biggest thing that I am looking forward to seeing people have to kind of eat their words on the idea that maybe this offense isn't good, but the idea that they're not going to swing the ball around, that they're not going to spread it out, that they're not, they're not going to take the ball from shotgun and, and pass on first down. Like that's, that's not, we have no indication that's what's going to happen with this team this year. It's going to be different. Right. I think, yeah, in my point of view on um, like what to expect from the Titans this year, and you guys can correct me if I'm wrong, is like it's going to be a little bit more pass heavy than people are maybe used to or expecting. You have no um, idea what you're talking about. You yeah, know, <laughs> <laughs> well, you know, that's national, folks. You idiots. Uh, Do you even watch uh, the game? Watch the games, dude. <laughs> you grind the tape. I watch the games, bro. Watch the games, dude. Don't you even watch games? Um, dude, the Jake Browning thing from last year that's like it's like a, a funny sort of side narrative that people barely paid attention know, like to it but it happened or seven weeks during the season it was like the weirdest thing <laughs> that, yeah. that like happened the whole year it's like jake browning is better than joe burrow all of a sudden what um, was that one primetime game he played in where it's like holy shit like i think against yeah. the jags right was it, it, was, it, was, it, was, it was against, against the jaguars that's what it was. Yeah. yeah 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 i mean i wasn't i didn't watch any of the games but yeah it's like uh, right right we'll tell you about them later <laughs> No, but I mean, it, I think the thing that struck me about watching Browning play was like he, he had an element of fearlessness to him. It wasn't like they just, you know, turtled up and put their head in the shell and tried to like survive getting away, you know, with with Burrow out indefinitely. Like they they kind of just went for it. They kind of flung it down the field and they had the receivers. They had, you know, um, the talent to do that. And I, and I could see the Titans being more aggressive more free flowing um, than I think maybe like, again, like people are sort of expecting to see where there's like a conservative protect the quarterback. Like maybe it's not gonna be quite like that this year. And I'm again, very excited to see what, what Levis can do. I th I feel like he's probably going to have a lot of turnovers, but also a lot yes. of big time throws, a lot of really exciting plays, just let him go and, and kind of play his style of ball, which is very aggressive, you know, not much, like concern for his own health, which of course is a double edged sword, but he's going to be like running around a bunch. Um, yeah, he, he, if we're talking about fantasy, like he has a lot of upside too, because he's a really good athlete who could run around more than anyone thinks too. Um, so he could do that element on the ground game as well. I think the best case scenario for him is, and it's not perfect comps in certain, in terms of play style, but in terms of what the, like the box score looks like and what the fantasy relevance is, it's like the, what was it? What was the year that the lights came on for Josh Allen? Uh, or, you know, mm -hmm. the, the where it's like, holy crap, he threw 17 interceptions, but he threw 35 touchdowns, uh, you know, and, <laughs> right. uh, you know, or or like a young Matt Stafford where, um, you know, he, he is more athletic than you think he is. He is a gamer. He's a YOLO kind of guy. Um, again, that is best case scenario for sure. But, right. you know, we've seen guys in the past just flip that switch, turn it on. And uh, I think that that could be yeah. the case with him. 
it happens every year. Some random guy is somebody like way, does way better. Yeah, right. Exactly. Speaking of every year, last year at this time, um, I, I was listening to a lot of fantasy content, yours included, and <laughs> every episode of <sighs> your particular show. Yeah, was uh, a rant and rave session about one Mr. Tony Pollard. The uh, yeah. the anecdote yeah. was that you and Danny Heifetz and Craig Horlbeck all went on the big man uh, uh, Bill Simmons podcast, and he asked you like your guy last year, and you all agreed it was Tony Pollard, which well, yeah. was a uh, dead giveaway at the moment to any of us <laughs> listening to stay away from Tony Pollard. However, should have been yes, should yeah it, no it was to us. You guys just didn't know. Um, okay, <laughs> smart. smart, right. And then when you kind of got burned on that, then then the, then the 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 take was we should have realized this guy. I mean, Heifetz just kept saying he broke his leg this year. It was in yeah. 2023. So we're the year away from the year. And uh, there's on paper, I think, reason to be kind of post type sleepery on mm -hmm. Tony Pollard. The, the yeah. biggest thing, honestly, for me, not going mm -hmm. all in on Tony Pollard is that Tajay Spears exists. And I, I actually think he's just a better running back than Tony Pollard is. And he's younger and he's fresher, even though he doesn't have an ACL. Don't worry about that. Uh, he'll be fine. Yeah, right. He'll be fine. I. What are your thoughts on Pollard a year removed from being all in on him and kind of getting burned on that? Yeah, I think. Um, yeah, it, it sucks when Heifetz is right, because he was saying it kind of all along. It's like, rare. For, to be fair <laughs> he's rare. actually right we make fun of him all the time but he's right way more often than maybe I'd the like problem is that when he's wrong it is disastrously <laughs> wrong it is <laughs> right. so loud and right, right. that's bombastic yeah he's really really wrong one time a year but otherwise he's very <laughs> right most it's of really time. funny um, yeah that's fair but yeah so he, he he obviously was sort of the voice of reason a lot during the last like during off season last year and talking about how he are you guys worried? Like he really broke his leg bad. Like it was bad. You know, uh, is this where you at all? We're like, ah, it's fine. Don't worry about he it. He says he's faster now. Don't worry about yeah, it. Yeah. He, he told us he's better, which, you know, players have never lied about that ever. Mm -hmm. Um, but you know, ultimately it, it sucks because on one hand I'm like, yeah, we were really, really wrong. He, he ended up being one of the more disappointing fantasy players. Uh, but at the same time, like his volume was really good. It was basically what we were hoping he was, he had 252 rushes, which was seventh most in the NFL, um, and he added 55 catches. So, like, if you if you would have told me 252 rushes and 55 catches, like he is going to be one of the best. You're assuming players. that's awesome, yeah, totally. yeah. Um, and that was kind of like half of our our theory here. And then, of course, he just wasn't as nearly as explosive. And honestly, like, he was just a little unlucky. He didn't score as many touchdowns um, as he should have. He was like, uh, based on his volume and based on where he was touching the ball, was like his expected touchdowns was like ridiculously high and he just couldn't get in the freaking end zone for whatever reason, for right. multiple reasons. Um, and so his lack of touchdowns was really what, what held him back and made him such a bad pick. And part of that is just bad luck. Part of it is he was not healthy for half the year or not fully healthy for half the year. Um, and I still think he's a really good player. And I still think he's got some juice. I still think he's a, a tackle breaker, electric type player in space. Um, Ultimately, I'm a little worried about like, yeah, how the timeshare is going to go with Tajay Spears. I think there's a chance there's a world in which Spears is the lead guy and Pollard is sort of just a change up. Um, maybe they ride the hot hand. I don't know exactly how it's all going to play out. And that gives that that makes Pollard a risky pick. Mm -hmm. um, but they also gave him quite a bit of money. Again, this is a player who two years ago, as of two years ago, was one of the most electric, elusive running backs in the NFL. Um, now he's in theory healthy. Um closer to what he was you know when he was with the cowboys and i think you can build a case that he's going to have a huge break back uh, a breakout season a bounce back season from what he did um a couple of years ago and so i don't know i'm not gonna get excited about him and, and talk him up just because i was burned so bad last season but uh, you know he's he's still a guy that i really like i think he's talented um has the juice and you know, again, if this offense is, is a lot better than we think it's going to be, or, or a lot of people think it's going to be, then he could be a pretty good value at where he's going. I think he's like RB 24, 25, something like that. He's 22 um, for you guys. Yeah. Yeah. And so, pros. you know, he, he's not expensive and I think he's, he, you know, his upside is definitely worth a, uh, a flyer. You, you he's say definitely, I was going to say ahead, he's a, he's a most, he's a post hype sleeper for sure. Like if there is anyone this year, um, and especially where you're getting him right now, it kind of also helps that he is kind of moving back into that mold of not being 
the the number the one guy, guy. And, and having to be right, right. it all the time because even if you look past the, what the Cowboys had last year, Rico Dowdle and Deuce Vaughn, it's like Deuce. they put them into into that Tony Pollard role, and it never really worked out. So to the point where Tony Pollard just had to play jack of all trades last year for them, and that along with the the um, inefficiencies of that Cowboys offense at times, especially in the run mm-hmm. game, kind of just led to him not being able to be that top five running back that we saw the year prior. Now that he's kind of back yeah. in this sort of role where, you know, the running backs coaches have been saying this entire offseason that both of them are going to get touches. It feels it's like, so annoying too. We ask him like, who's yeah. the guy? And they're like, yep. <laughs> the answer is, is yes. It's like, is <laughs> right. it is it yes, Tony thanks. or cool. is it or is it uh, is it DJ? Those are our go, two running yes, backs. Yes, correct. Those are, the guys. Those are the guys. And Julius Chestnut, Dylan Johnson, they all are running backs who can get touches, and that's what we like here. And we're like, great, thank awesome. you. Um, but <laughs> we'll right I think flaws, that man. with Tony Pollard coming back into a little bit more of given a specific role in this offense, I think that allows him to probably be better uh, better suited for this role. So are we going to see Tony Pollard back in the top five running back conversation in fantasy ever again? I don't think so, but at the, at the value you're getting him as out an outside top 20 running back, I, I yeah. don't see a world where he's going to fall off the, the face of the earth. I think he can be a pretty solid running back too for you, like in the fifth to seventh round of a draft. Yeah. Yeah. That's how I see him too. I mean, again, it's, it's, it's going to come down to like how efficient he is. He's going to be able to score some touchdowns. Um, but if he turns anything remotely back into like what he looked like prior to breaking his leg, I mean, he doesn't need a ton of touches. He just needs to be electric yep. and explosive and score a few touchdowns and, and be a featured uh, player in the passing game. And he'll be very fantasy relevant. Because my and wife saw me. me gave me a heart attack. It, oh, no. She it's oh, no. it's fine. It's like about groceries. It has nothing to no. do with it. It's just, <laughs> it's just, it's just, just jump scaring me. Don't do that. Uh, he, Danny, he had that moment though. And like, I know you, you come on a show that's like team specific and as, especially as a national guy, I'm sure you're like, let's do all the positive things. No one wants to hear me come and shit on their team. Uh, I, I'm not crazy about from a fantasy perspective. I'm not crazy about Pollard and where he is, frankly. Mm-hmm. And I, I think there is potential for there to be some post type sleeper business going on here, but he, you guys on your show. And I, I'm realizing this entire show is turning tr- tr- into like a comment, a meta commentary on your show and people that don't watch your show are like, what's going on right now. There's some background. There's you guys have a bit, uh, the Mark Andrews moment that guys have. Right. And there right. was a moment a couple of years ago that Mark Andrews on the Ravens had a ball thrown directly into both of his hands in the end zone. And he volleyball set it into the stands and like, didn't catch the ball and it just gave yeah. you the ick. You're like, I don't want to draft this ick. guy anymore. Cause he had that yeah. thing. I can't get it out of my head. Mm-hmm. Tony Pollard had that last year and I was sitting on my couch watching it. And it, for folks that I don't, I don't even remember who they're playing, but they're on the goal line and it is a, it is a run to the the left side. Or, or, yeah. Or, it's like a toss around. play. I want to say, right. That, um, they were playing the dolphins. I believe. Okay. So yeah, yeah. somebody sent me the picture and there's like, he's got an angle to probably like 40% of the end zone, just wide open, just end zone, clear end zone. Yeah, we're scoring one, on that. And there's one you, defender. Me and JT are scoring that touchdown. Yeah, there's like a corner chasing him. First of all, running backs are supposed to beat corners. Like sure corners are. are not good tacklers generally. Like you, you, if you get a corner, that is an advantage offense. Mm-hmm. Um, and I'm not 100 percent sure it was a corner, but it was a defensive back chasing him. He's got wide open area, one guy to beat, and he gets tackled on one yard line. It was like the most frustrating play. I think I don't literally think he gained any. I think it was like a te- like technically a loss of yardage. Yeah, yeah. It, was it was just so so bad. Um, and I remember but... sitting watching it live and thinking, I guarantee they mentioned this on y'all's next. Like this is <laughs> this that was a that was an ick moment that this guy just had. And and the juxtaposition yeah. at the time on Twitter was any but like Derrick Henry scoring that touchdown. You think Derrick Henry is not scoring that touchdown? He's scoring that touchdown. And now Derrick Henry's gone, and now it's Tony Pollard in there. And so I, you know, that brings us to the other guy and Ty J Spears who. You guys have to, and I, I'm not going to sit here and purport to be better at fantasy than, than you are one, because it's what you do full time. And two, because JT can attest to the fact that as good of sports better, I am, I am just as bad a fantasy player. I, I really am not, I am no good at it. You're only um, allowed to be good at one of those. Yeah, exactly. And I'm, you know, I choose the one that I make money in, I guess. So that's, there's that, sure. but then I just yeah. look dumb to my friends. Um, you got, you got, I'm going to tell you you're wrong on this though. You guys okay. have Tony Pollard as running back 22 and you have Tajay Spears as running back 39. Right. That's you got them backwards, my friend. I, 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 okay. I have the, I have strong Good conviction enough. that it, it may not be exactly backwards. Ty J up at 22, probably a little bit rich. 
you know, Tony, they probably Tony just Allen need to be closer nine. together. It's, they I mean, they do, and, and right now that that but that reflects how they're being drafted. I mean, like in the the couple of fantasy drafts I've already done, you've got Tony Pollard going much earlier than Ty J Spears, and it's usually me taking Ty J Spears later. Like Haha, you idiots, mm-hmm. you don't know it's about to hit you. Mm-hmm. That I, I will be floored if. Tony Pollard is significantly better in real life and in fantasy than Ty J Spears this year. Again, because I just think Ty J is a better back than he is. Yeah, I think this is one of those situations where um, as we get closer to the season and we try and like figure out how the usage is going to work and maybe mm-hmm. there'll be like more discussion from the coaches or whatever. Maybe there's some indication based on how they play them in preseason games. True. And, and, you know, you start to see the ADPs move for both of the guys. Um, and I think there could be pretty massive ADP movement for both of these players um, over the next couple of months. But um, I think it's like just for now, it feels like Pollard is going to be the starter because he got paid so much money. Um, and that's maybe very wrong. Like that could just end up being flat wrong. And, and that's why, uh, you know, to be totally honest, like it's, it's way better value to just take spheres right now. Um, you know, when there's uncertainty in the backfield in terms of like what kind of rotation you're going to be like, a lot of times you're just better off taking the cheaper player. Um, so right. yeah, I mean, I don't, I don't even necessarily like disagree with you. Like, again, I'm kind of, I, I could see a world in which Pollard is just an afterthought in this offense and Tajay Spears takes over and you know, the, it's Pollard's going to look like a, an awful pick, but, um, I think right now it's just kind of like following the money and, and following the, the experience and the track there. record. Yeah. Yeah. Um, but, but yeah, I mean, I'm, I don't have strong conviction that Pollard is like for sure going to be better than Spears. I think that's just kind of like where we landed based on some of the, the tea leaves, but, um, I'm, I'm willing to, uh, be moved on that for sure. And then there's so the-, the world that is, the Titans this year just start to kind of what they've been alluding to is using a lot of these more like two back formations. And we just see each other yeah. like Spears and Pollard cannibalize each other. Like Spears does what he's good at and he is the passing game guy. And then you have Tony Pollard who is just the, you know, low to the ground, just pound it ground and pound guy. And then it's and like, they both get seven neither of these guys, and yeah, seven to eight points a week. And yeah. then you're like, <laughs> you're touchdown yeah. dependent. And you're like, Oh man, this didn't matter at all. <laughs> right. Exactly. What? So it is, it's hard. I think it's hard to pick between those running backs and probably dangerous to do so. Um, I, they're kind of guys that I'm, I'm avoiding from, yeah. from a draft perspective and to, unless it's like a, a flyer pick at the end, it's also hard to distinguish between these receivers. Um, and the Titans have three good ones. And I think that the hardest is, is looking at Deandre Hopkins or Calvin Ridley. Like, how do you pick between those two guys? Um, that's kind of the case around the AFC South. Like there's not a, we're going to get to the Texans here in a minute. Also a very, like, who do you pick in this offense, uh, receiver wise But with D hop and Ridley and Tyler Boyd, who I don't think anybody's really like, Oh, Tyler Boyd's gonna be that guy. So between Hopkins and Ridley, like who who are you leaning and why? I think I would lean Hopkins just based on. I think he's going to be cheaper slightly. Um, I'm True. guessing, although that could change over the next couple of weeks or months. But um, Hopkins you know, is y'all's wide receiver, thirty eight. Ridley is thirty three, so slightly cheaper. Yeah, I mean, I I personally like Hopkins' track record for for target share and just earning targets, demanding targets, mm-hmm. is almost unparalleled. Like he is just ludicrously good at earning targets. If you're in like PPR the the game. Yeah. 100%. Yeah. That's the name of the game in fantasy. I know that he's like he's getting older. I think his he's fallen off in terms of his overall explosiveness of ability to separate, but that was never really a big part of his game to be right. honest and so um he has the type of game that might age gracefully and and take a little bit longer for him to really trail off and so um I'm just taking the cheaper guy here. You know, I think again I, I'm not shelling out and it's not like either guy is super expensive but i'm not like i'm not like really excited about going after ridley based on just the uncertainties of the offense uncertainties of the Mm -hmm. quarterback um and the ridley role really like is he gonna be because like last year ridley was disappointing in the way that they used him i don't you know this is the jag so you don't have to tell us man oh yeah yeah but I, I think there's enough uncertainty and question marks over like how he's going to be utilized, how he's going to have chemistry with Levis, what this offense is going to look like, how much, how much passing they're going to do. I think the, what like the one constant that I'm expecting to see is just like Hopkins is going to lo- get a lot of targets. There may be not going to be like more that he efficient. provides really. Yeah. Yeah. He, yeah. I think the floor is just better with Hopkins. And I think, um, you know, he, he's still, a really, really good receiver. And I think Levis is going to really lean on him. So um, that was, that'd be why I'd probably lean Hopkins, even though 
we have him ranked slightly we have Ridley ranked slightly higher um I'm this is another situation where I'm just going with a cheaper guy probably because I don't mm-hmm. I think there's just enough question marks around these two that I I'd rather just wait a little bit and get Hopkins a little later as you talk about this team, I can see the wheels turning in your head, and you, you even explicitly mentioned it there, where it's it's hard with how much, like, we just, we don't know the, the head coach, we don't know the quarterback, like, we just don't know, it's all projection. Do, do any of your answers change if, if I told, like, if CJ Stroud is the quarterback of this team, or if this is, you know, they're on the Jaguars, and it, it's it's DeAndre Hopkins and Calvin Ridley with Trevor Lawrence, does that change the way that you, like, if, if we say... Will Levis, he's going to work out. He's going to be this caliber of quarterback. This offense yeah, is going to yeah. work. It's like functionally, he's got protection. It's going to be at least fine. Does that change the way that you look at this wide receiver group? Um, no, I think I, I I'd certainly would be more in on Ridley if that was the case. Okay. But I still think um, I'd be really excited about Hopkins. I just think Hopkins is so good. I don't, maybe I'm like holding on to like a nostalgic feeling or something. I don't think because you he, are. I don't think I, you are. I just think he's just so freaking good. He's just a gamer. Um, he reminds me of like a Devonte Adams where he's just so mm-hmm. good. He, it's like very, very difficult to get, like hold him back. Um, and again, in fantasy, this is something that's just ingrained targets are how you score points, especially in half PPR PPR. Um, right. and I don't want to be living, you know, I don't want to be living the world where I'm like, Oh, hopefully Calvin Ridley gets four targets this week. Like I want 10 <laughs> right. targets. <laughs> right. You know? right. Yeah. Exactly. Um, uh, so that's, that's I feel like that's going to be more likely to happen with Hopkins. Um, as long as he's out there, he's always, always, always earning targets. Um, it, so that's kind of how I feel about that. And that's but, the best uh, thing, yeah. like about his hands, like you were saying, like <clears throat> one thing that is going to age gracefully, no matter what, is the ability for him to catch the ball, even if he loses his speed and some of that route running right. ability. Unless right. he gets right. like a it, Doctor it, Strange style yeah, car accident, <laughs> right? Yeah, he gets the in the and fingers. then he loses yeah. all of his function in his hands or, or whatever. <laughs> um, that would but, suck really would it would it would would be tough um but i think that also pairs well and we saw that a little bit last year with will levis kind of being yolo like Mm -hmm. with with a guy like deandre hopkins he's gonna have a better chance at hauling in some of those wildly inaccurate passes that will levis can be tend to know and and i think that is what kind of gives him the step up on like a calvin ridley not to mention the fact that he already has the chemistry like he already is his right. go-to guy so i the like, i blanket. wouldn't be surprised exactly i wouldn't be surprised if we like out of the gates like if deandre hopkins is going like a round or two later than calvin ridley he ends up being the better scoring wide receiver for like the first five or six weeks as like calvin ridley and these other receivers start to get on track mm, with bingo with levis but like levis already has that that caliber and he is like the the hands technician technician there that can like just go up and get the ball that will levis wildly overthrows and so that's why it, it might be <laughs> better better choice just with all of those factors to go with a guy like deandre that's exactly what i was going to say I, I think deandre is a draft and sell high candidate because I, I think especially early on when this offense is still trying to gel mm-hmm. that's going to be the one constant where like those two literally last year the entire offense was just will playing catch with deandre and i think to start it's maybe a lot of that and it may be like holy like wow deandre hopkins is a viable wide receiver two or three in fantasy for the first month or so and then you sell them off before the offense starts to figure it out and they spread it out. Yeah. I think that's, that's a, well, you also, it, yeah. And that's, that's a good point. Plus you, you tend to see older receivers trail off uh, mm-hmm. as the season goes on, like later in their careers. It's not always, sure. but that's something that, you know, the age cliff start to, up. to really like get, yeah, get there and you get banged up or, you know, defenses uh, start to like, you know, figure out what you're doing a little bit and, and take away that guy. So yeah, I like that. That's a good idea. Time to zoom out. Let's talk about the AFC South here a little bit. And uh, we can start with the Texans, who are not in an equally ambiguous situation as a team, like in real life. The the football product is going to be very good this year. Uh, But fantasy wise, I feel like they're just as ambiguous because their wide receiver room gives me just as much pause. I don't know who to pick out of these guys. They go and right. they they get Stefan Diggs, which I believe you guys referred to as just annoying on the show the other day. Uh, from a fantasy, <laughs> why did they have to trade for this guy? Just right, makes everything harder for us jerks. I mean, it makes it so much harder because you got you've got Nico Collins, who seemed ascendant coming off of mm-hmm. last year, and before that trade for Diggs, like I'm I'm secretly putting him very 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 high on my list, especially in dynasty right. leagues of guys that I want to go get and maybe overdraft a little bit. Now, man, I don't know because we, you know, we saw, we saw, we saw what Diggs did at the end of last year. 
there's a lot of talk about uncertainty. Is the dude washed? Did, was the system with Joe Brady? Like what's, what was that? I don't right. know. What do you, what, right. what do you make of what the end of last year was for Diggs? Um, I don't know, honestly. It, it, okay, cool. I think, Same. Yeah. I think there's uh, several questions you have to answer before you can get to the truth on this is like one, you know, is he just washed at this point? Cause he's getting to be that age where a lot of guys will fall off a cliff. It, it just happens so often in the NFL and, and he's, he's nearing that point. I mean, he's over 30 years old now. He's, uh, you know, he'll turn 31 in November. So mm -hmm. that's a, that's a concern. I don't know the answer to that. I think that he's still got it. I think he's still good. And I think it's more likely that the system change um, that the bills went through was just more like, we're not relying on one guy to like win. we're spreading the ball around. Like the system was just more um, focused on just getting the ball to the different guys. It wasn't like, let's just feed digs. And so I think um, that's the second question, I guess is like, was it a scheme or was he falling off? Um, and then the third one would be, you know, is he just a, insufferable diva <laughs> like this is like the third this is like his third team now he's like always been guy. really good yeah but now we've seen two teams get rid of him you know and so it was the 9 11 that. pep talk where he drew, drew the line he's like i'm not i'm not about <laughs> yeah, it this guy yeah. yeah god um yeah so i think the questions are there's like so many questions that you have to answer before you really can figure out what's going on here is and, and i just don't you know, I don't know the answer to that. I think my guess is he's still going to be good. He's still going to command a lot of targets and he's going to mess it up for Nico Collins and tank Dell from a fantasy point of view, obviously from a real life perspective, like the, the Texans are stacked. It's going to be awesome for CJ Stroud. I think CJ Stroud is the real winner here. Um, yeah. But I think, you know, they're all so expensive. Nico Collins, Stefan Diggs, and tank Dell, all top 25 receivers, I think in ADP and you they're know, not going like, to finish could, that way. Some, yeah, somebody is not going to be there. Yeah, there's some like, you know, some other shoe has to drop or whatever. The, what's the expression? Um, but it was close enough. What is yeah. it? I, the other the, shoe drops. The, that, yeah, that's that's what it is. Drops. Yeah. What is the that? The other shoe is going to drop. Don't ask yeah. me. I'm not. I'm not the same guy. <laughs> we did it. We did very... an entire 15 minute bit about how JT doesn't know anything about idioms. <laughs> I, don't, I don't know. Anything. I'm apparently famous for like messing up idiom, like mixed mixed idioms or mixed whatever, metaphors like and stuff. Yeah. 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 yeah um anyways you gotta pronounce words i think there's one of these guys is going to be very disappointing if not all of them um mm -hmm. and so i'm probably just going to be kind of going to be a stay away in fantasy uh, in dynasty i'm still very bullish on nico and tank mm -hmm. um you know this year might not be as fun as you you would have expected without stefan Diggs, but um i still like those guys long term i just think this year it's just too hard to know and this is also a team that last year was frustratingly run heavy balanced running a lot on first and second down. Um, so and, Joe you know, Mixon, are we in on, <laughs> are we in on Joe? Talk yeah, about I a guy that Joe, like, what do you make I about mean, this guy? I, I mean, uh, the, the amount of money that they gave him. Was so much. Pretty so dramatic. much. Uh, and this is a team, like I said, they're going to run a lot. And I don't think they have like a backup running back. Um, how dare Damian you? Pierce how? Is, Damian Pierce is like, <laughs> my you? eyes lit up. I said, uh oh. I said, uh oh. As much Dude, as, as I, much as your buddy Craig was like, what happened to Damian? I, I've never related more to like that's I, me. No, don't yeah. get me wrong. I love Damian Pierce. I, I, I think might have drafted really him in the good. fourth round of a, of a league a couple of years ago. Yeah. yeah, I think he's just like truly <laughs> a terrible, that. terrible scheme fit for what they're doing in this offense, and he needs to which is trained. probably cope. But that's what I'm saying too. Yeah, um, scheme fit. This I, guy put get get him to the Rams. Let this I guy think run. It's part cope and part like we were just like a little too, you know, high on him based those on those preseason games where you know he's a fourth round pick. Sexy. We'd probably be a little bit like yeah. reticent to go all in on him, but I think. Um, he just would be a much better fit in a different style offense, like something closer to what we saw as a, as a rookie. And so, um, yeah, it's like Joe Mixon, Pierce, who, who they just don't want to play apparently. And then, yeah. you know, a bunch of other random guys. I uh, Darian Albert Moon, O, Bawari. I think, is there still? Is he? I think so. Albert think, O uh, on the Texans? Yes. Wait, am I dumb? I thought he was a Broncos. Albert o o Bowie Coonham? No, not him. Um I thought Albert O played for it's the a weird Denver last uh, maybe maybe I think I'm you're gonna... probably thinking of a Goomba Wale a Goomba am, Wale. but they yeah, they do have a they do have yeah. a weird name an O name like you don't that. know how to pronounce you yes. just went with O yeah, that's fair <laughs> um regardless it's I think it's gonna be mixing and then he's just gonna get a ton of volume 
I do agree with you, especially like if they could turn Devin Singletary back into like a productive running back and kind of revive his career last year, like with Bobby Slowick, like you still have some tread on the tires with a Joe Mixon. Like, I think it's even just like going to be a lot better and more efficient than what Devin Singletary could be able to do. Seven Dingletary starting running back for the New York Giants. Um, (laughs) Okay, let's let's do let's do the Colts now. And um, Anthony Richardson. Yeah. Uh, what's not to love? Loved him coming out. Was my quarterback one at the end of that draft process? Uh, Ooh, heartbreaking that he had to go to uh, the Colts. And the hype is very loud. Um, you're you're seeing him atop a lot of lists, near the top of a lot of lists. The it's it's talk about a projection. I mean, the guy's played 15 minutes in the league, but the upside is just so tantalizing. And I get it. I do. Are we losing our minds a little bit? Like the I think the risk involved here is yeah. is bigger than people are letting on. Oh, he's definitely risky. Um, I, I mean, I think relative to most quarterbacks, I'd say, especially because he hasn't proven he has, he does not have a long track record as a passer and throw in the fact that he's been hurt. Like, I don't know, three out Which of the one are you more worried about. He, are you more worried? He might just not be good at football or that he'll break again. Cause for I'm me, more, it, I'm more worried about the injury situation. Yeah, same. You know okay. what I mean? Like I, I'm think pretty that, confident he can play ball and it, yeah, at least fantasy same. wise is going to produce. Yeah, same, you know, especially from a fantasy point of view, because he's just such an electric runner. Like he might like mm-hmm. legitimately be the best athlete to play quarterback of all time ever. Um, yeah. And so, yeah, there's there's a lot of projection here. It's a little bit risky or a lot risky because I think there's a, a chance he could get hurt again. You know, there's a chance he could regress even from the little from the small sample we saw, like, you know, his because I think people are really excited mostly because he's really natural in the pocket. He moves around. He goes through his you know, goes through his progressions. He, he gets rid of the football. Um, he doesn't take a ton of sacks. I think he's a good, really, obviously a really good scrambler. The, what, what Shane Steichen was doing. There it is. What Steichen did, man. One game was so cool. Like I just have one play in mind, but like he, there was a lot of different things they did, but like one play in mind where they had all the motion go to the left. And then he did like a naked boot out to the right, mm-hmm. scored a touchdown on that. It was just like, man, mm-hmm. the, the sky is truly the freaking limit with this guy. It's like Jalen hurts plus, um, as a fantasy, you know, quarterback. And so, um, obviously I think he's just worth the risk. I think that you have to take that risk. He could be a league winner. It reminds me of like early career Lamar, um, yeah. where, you know, he could legitimately break fantasy football. Um, but also he could break his shoulder and then not play. Um, so it's just one of those things you, you have to, you have to be a little bit wary about it, but like, I think it's worth it. He's worth the risk. I think a, huge part of it if not like the majority part of it is what we saw Steichen do with Gardner Minshew last year because if they had been completely right. irrelevant really middling struggling to find any identity offensively stagnant I don't I mean like I think the hype would still be like okay finally we get to see Anthony Richardson sure but I don't think it would be where it currently is him being drafted in like the first second round of, of drafts because when you've got a coordinator and a head coach like that who no offense to Gardner Minshew, who is electric in his own right. But like, if you <laughs> can do what you did with him the way that they did, it you you feel like, oh, this guy can work with anybody. You give him anything. And now you're giving him, like you said, maybe the most athletic person to ever play quarterback. Yeah, That is so reassuring. Um, And I think that's the, like, again, I, I play musical chairs in my head with like, well, I wonder what the narrative would be if Will Levis had Shane Steichen or if Brian Callahan was that guy where it was like, prove that was a proven commodity and it wasn't both the quarterback and the, the, the coach kind of deal. Um, mm-hmm. I think that is that is the driving force behind it, uh, even more so than Anthony Richardson. Very exciting looking guy. Yeah, uh, I'm kind of all in on Richardson this year. I, I want to get him in as many places as I can, just because you draft him first round. Um, of Dynasty, yeah, I think the obvious for sure. Right. Yeah, like for sure in Dynasty. Um, I think I picked him like third or fourth last year a couple times how many quarterbacks um, in the league are you drafting ahead of richardson if they're still on the board like who who are you taking ahead of him is there is he the guy is he your number one it's choice? like alan lamar hurts and then i think you could make the argument for mahomes but he mahomes has to throw like 40 something touchdowns to like yeah have the upside um i think richardson and murray kyler murray are mm. really good picks this year in terms of fantasy just because again like and this is not novel at this point i think everyone knows it in fantasy but like it's truly a cheat code to have a rushing quarterback like it's like having a running back and a quarterback in one roster spot 
Um, and so it just is, it's truly like a cheat code for, for your roster, for your team. And so you have to chase that and it's going to be expensive and it's going to be risky. Um, but like you might win your league. I think you have to take some risks in fantasy. Um, and this is the type of type, type of risk you take. Does that diminish Jonathan Taylor's standing at all? The, the idea that yeah. you think so? Yeah. I, yeah. Taylor is a hard one because very, um, Another guy you're not sure he's going to play. I mean, yeah, he's like an extremely explosive, big play guy. But in this offense, it's like, is Richardson going to steal a lot of his, his thunder, steal a lot of his rushes, steal a lot of his touchdowns, most importantly. Um, you know, I think they'll probably play it safe with Richardson around the goal line just because of the how it went last year. I think he, he got hurt on a sneak and then he mm -hmm. got hurt running into the end zone, I believe, like getting the corner and then basically fell on his back and hurt his head, uh, right. hit his head on the, the turf. And so I think both of those were red zone runs. Um, at least so maybe the, I can't remember the other I can't, one. I can't remember off the top of my head. I believe they were both really, one of them was either short yardage or red zone. Mm -hmm. um, and so I think you got to be careful with them and they may, that might bode well for Jonathan Taylor, but at the same time, um, I think the way that he can run the way that he can do like Cam Newton style stuff where he's like, skying over the the pile things like that um it definitely could affect taylor's ceiling i don't think he has nearly the ceiling as some of the other guys that are much better at pass, ca catching passes and things like that all right well we can move on and we've lost our the entirety of our audience at this point because anybody listening to me agree with you on anthony richardson hype it, the, the i mean talk about titans fans being upset if you mention anything positive about him online <laughs> it is we've not even seen this guy play come on just, just relax this guy you yeah. might not even be able to stay on the field for more than four games a year. Um, he's good at football, guys. Sorry. Uh, the Jaguars. Sorry. I only have one thing written down here, and it's what like what do I do with this team? Like, who do you, do you draft? Any like you know, <laughs> they got Trevor Lawrence. <laughs> they got what? a rookie receiver. What do like, we what do, do you, with you? Do any of yeah. these guys appeal to you, or are you just kind of like I don't know? Mm, I think ETN is still a good pick. Okay. Um, I like Evan know, Ingram. Evan like, Ingram. If, fair, you wanna, if you want to, if you if you want to yeah. like stay away from like using one of your like third or fourth round picks on one of those top end like tight ends, ends like a yeah. Kincaid or a yes. McBride or something, like Evan Ingram is the perfect guy who's going to be up there with them every week because he really just has become a yeah. little bit just like Christian Kirk is in. It's like it's Kirk and Evan Ingram, and then probably it will it will probably continue to be that way. But it's like it's Kirk, it's Ingram, and then the other five or six guys are going to hash it out for, for fantasy relevance, yeah. but you can like know that Evan Ingram is going to get his touches, you know, or targets. Yeah. yeah I think that's a, that's a great one. I think, you know, obviously people point to the Doug Peterson tight end connection a lot. And it, it, that definitely like played out again this last year, Evan Ingram, he had like a hundred something targets. Like he, or he was, he led the team in targets. Yeah. He I was believe. extremely, yeah. extremely productive. Um, so yeah, I like that call. Evan Ingram, in terms of like tier three, maybe tier two, tier three quarterback or uh, tight ends, mm -hmm. um, he's got to be one of my favorite ones. Um, and I really like Christian Kirk. I, I'm probably not going to be drafting a lot of Brian Thomas or Gabe, certainly not Gabe Davis, uh, Gabe Davis this year. Um, and ETN, I think, is like if you miss on the first sort of uh, group of high end running backs, ETN mm -hmm. still has a ton of explosiveness, ton of juice. Um, and in theory, if their, their passing game gets a little more consistent, I think he could, it could open things up for him on the, on the ground a little bit. Um, and also they just don't really have anyone else. Like tank, Biz tank Bigsby was one of the worst running backs. Like I've ever seen last year. Hey man, um, they keep saying they want to get him involved, baby. <laughs> I mean, he, JT was a big guy. guys. He's he has only, hey, the I only was, way he can go is yeah. up. All right. I so, was, I was, I was last season. I was, uh, Devon H N and tank could Bigsby you? to the moon. One of them worked mm. out really, really great. And the other one, you know what? We're still waiting. We're still waiting. Yeah, yeah. worse. Yeah. yeah. Could have been, been worse. worse. <laughs> uh, yeah. So it's funny because there was two guys named Tank out of that class last year. Tank Dell, Tank Bisby, Bigsby. One of them worked out. This guy did yeah. not. Um, but yeah, I mean, I think ETN is going to get a ton of volume. He's very explosive. Like I said, he has a, he might have a chance to score way more touchdowns this year. So I like him. I, I, he's not like one of my favorite guys. I'm going out of my way to draft. But if you miss on the first like flurry of, of running backs, they go off the board. I still think he has that high end potential to be an RB one. So um, I would say ETN Ingram, great pick. And then Christian Kirk, I'm, I'm like rock solid wide receiver two who could finish as a wide receiver one just based on volume. I want to talk about a, a couple of 
things just around the league that aren't AFC South specific specific. And then we can get out of here. Um, the first is uh, a fun question this time of year, every year who like, who's the team and specifically for fantasy, the offense mm-hmm. that people are not really talking about. And in three months, we're going to feel really dumb for not recognizing the potential. Obviously last year it was the Texans, right? It was the, the 2020 yeah. where is looking for who's that Texans team this year. It's going to blow up. I have an answer. I don't know. JT, yeah. do you have an answer in mind? I have an answer. Danny, do you, yes. do we need to give you time to think about this? Let me think about it. I want to hear okay. your answers first and then I'll, you want to go first, Easton, or I? I have one that you I'm go. really excited you go. for. Okay, you go. I'm curious. So like, if you have the same one. I, I'm excited about like this team in general, but the offense for sure. The Arizona Cardinals with Kyler. Son Murray of a, that's my answer. No, oh, man, they're so <laughs> ex- <Stop it>. Hey, <laughs> you wouldn't. Right this too. is so funny because he texted me. He said, "You think of one. I'm not telling you. I'm keeping it close I to said, the I'm best. not telling you and mine. I said, you think I said, of one. I said Arizona card. I mean, Trey McBride All is right, an well. ascending, like I think this is second or third year guy who has just become a tar- a target machine. Like he's, I think he's going to produce so much in fantasy. They he's finally so have a bona fide one. And I, I like yeah, Marvin, Harrison, Marvin Harrison, I think cat, pretty good at football. Mar- Marvin Harrison Jr. I think even oh, though he's fine. going in like the top 20 overall picks, like in is in that second round, I think he's going to produce from the get go. And then like you kind of alluded to earlier, like, Kyler Murray, man, at the, Tyler, back, Tyler, at the back end of the year last yeah. year, when he was kind of cooking and being he back to form. He's the guy in the league, in my um, opinion, fantasy-wise. And so, like, for fantasy-wise, if you kind of want, like, it's crazy that, like, we talk about these running quarterbacks that are, like, Anthony Richardson, Josh Allen, these, these top-tier guys who, like, can do both. And then Kyler Murray just kind of gets left by the wayside sometimes when he probably is one of the most elusive of them all to do it and can year make after the, year the, guy, most, by the, way. Uh, the, the year after the year. The, ba- the biggest opportunities for himself. Also, like you said, year after the year, like if mm-hmm. there's any Russian quarterback that I think you can get for an absolute bargain and a steal this year in fantasy, I think it's him. Once again, I just think James Conner is really, really good at football and he gets severely oh, just doubted every single year. Like James Conner has always been my guy, no matter what. He's, How many he's generic such... NFL fans on the street could I like tell you what team James Conner plays for? Not a lot. <laughs> it's not. It's he, not. Most he used of them. to be a Stealer. Is he, right. he used to play on that Le'Veon Bell team. Is he still in the, the running back? Like, right. Yeah, yeah right? that guy. Um, but then also like Trey Benson, I thought was a really nice prospect going like coming out. So like I'm really interested to see what Drew Petzing does in year two here with with Arizona, and I think they could be like really really fun. I'm going to emphasize two yeah. things on that, and then I'll let Danny go with his team. If it's also the Arizona Cardinals, I'm going to make fun of you because no. you heard us say it. I mean, that's a good one. It's got to be somebody else. I, for me, the two biggest elements are I think Petsing is the goods. I, I really was impressed with and I, like I didn't watch a ton of it live, but like going back this summer, watching some of the Cardinals stuff because I, I get the inkling of, do I like this team? And I go back and I watch and I'm like, hmm. And then you look down the stretch, I think people forget like they beat some good teams that like they beat. The Eagles, they beat like they they beat some legit teams down the stretch, and everybody was making fun of the head coaching hire in the offseason. You know, are you riding the bus? And then like it kind of works out for them. People are, players are buying in. Uh, they got your boy Dorch, get Dorch, Greg Dorch. The, the <laughs> can't the, believe the, I the, forgot about him. Short short thing, thing, like. Kyler Murray, what was the quote this offseason? He's like, if Greg Dorch was not tiny, he'd be a top five receiver in the league. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, he I had, think, like I, I think, can't remember exactly what he said, but. Fact is, he's like five six, so that, yeah. that is. He was like, if this also, guy was normal receiver yeah. height, he'd be so good. But he's not. But then again, now. like Greg Dorch gets to go up twice a year against uh, Travis Hodges Tomlinson, who is I think True. shorter than Greg Dorch is. Yeah. So like that's the perfect Dorch match. Key battle. Dorch Huge mossed battle. Dorch mossed him. Yes, last he did. Year. He did. He really, it was, it so was funny. the <laughs> shortest <laughs> jump ball situation in NFL <laughs> history. I think. It's amazing. Um, and he, and That's I, like you know, I want to say he did like five, five foot small, eight. He did like, like the too small thing. <laughs> when he did it. Uh, well, as a shorter person, like I, there have been like three times in my whole life in a regular like pickup basketball situation where I've gotten a, an actual like legitimate block of somebody, and it's just you feel <laughs> just. Mm. That's what that is, and it, it takes the smallest like point guard yeah. making a very foolish mistake and shooting in my face, but it happens, yeah. and you're like, yeah, I can, I'm big, I can do that. Um, well, first of all, I like, I like the Cardinals call for sure. I think they have a lot of value right now. I mean, you know, not, I'm not, I'm truly not pandering right now when I say like the most obvious choice here is the Titans, just because you're installing a new offense that could be very much different. It's a young quarterback who I think people don't have high expectations for upgraded, uh, skill group, upgraded offensive line, upgraded coach. I think the Titans are the obvious one where they could make like a really big jump and, and the quarterbacks in particular can make a really big jump. Um, the other team that kind of comes to mind here 
is the Saints, even though I, I wouldn't say like my I don't know if my rankings it's gross, really but I agree. It's so gross. Like you feel dirty doing it. This. Yeah, like I don't think I don't know if I my rankings reflect this yet, but like the offense is going to be very different for the first time in a really long time. And I actually like their skill group a lot. Like obviously Chris Olave, really, really good player. I think he could have a breakout season. He's been nothing but efficient um, throughout his career. I think Rashid Shahid is a guy that has a ton of talent. They could really mm -hmm. get more out of, especially mm -hmm. if he starts playing like legitimate number of snaps, like the big problem with Shahid has not been the talent or the efficiency or yards per route run or, or touchdown big playability. Like it's all there. He just doesn't play enough snaps. Like for whatever reason, uh, Dennis Allen, I think still kind of like hates him for, I don't know, like what the deal is there, <laughs> but like, um, maybe he's a knucklehead who knows, but like if he's plays more than 70% of the snaps, he's, he's like a lock for these three receiver sets that they, that they're playing or even two receiver sets. Um, he could be a big breakout in fantasy. I like AT Perry a lot coming out. Um, I thought he was a steal. Juwan Johnson, although he is hurt right now, um, he's another guy that I really like. And then, um, in terms of like hidden value, Kendra Miller, if he ends up being like the, the one a there, like along with uh, Camaro, who's obviously going to be like a big part of their offense. Um, his legs he could, weigh the same he now. Make a big jump. Yeah. What's that? Yeah. His, his legs, legs weigh the same, same now. now. How about that? Huge, huge deal. Um, that was a big thing in Titans media this year. Cause they got a, you know, the new coaching staff. They brought in a new strength and conditioning guy and we got to speak yeah. to him once. And it, he was mentioning like the biometrics measuring muscle mass left and right side. And everybody in town was like, that's oh, I'm going to write a story about that. And I was like, ah, they've been doing this. I know. I know about all about this. Don't even worry about <laughs> yeah, it. Yeah. I'm an expert uh, in this field. Um, um, I noticed the guy I, you didn't yeah. mention was the quarterback of that team. Well, that uh, was what I was going to get to. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I don't have very much confidence in car and I'm not like Do going on my way to pick car. Yeah. But again, if, if the question is what team is going to weigh out, outplay expectations, I have low expectations for Derek Carr, but skill group is good. Um, they've made some changes in offensive line. Like they drafted Talise Fuaga, you know, mm -hmm. with their first round pick. Um, you know, they have invested a ton in this offensive line over the years. Hopefully they can kind of find a five guys that'll really work for them. Um, and again, bringing in a new offense for the first time in like for what feels like forever. Um, this just could be like a different team. It's a good then, point. It's going to be the Spencer Rattler show eventually. I was so about, to about, about, about to say, about once, sure. about once Spencer sure. Rattler gets in the saddle in week six, like, it's, it, it, it's the roller coaster is over. It, yeah. it, we're, we're off to the races. There's yeah. no there's no bigger difference. Well, that's maybe not true, but like the, the, one of the biggest differences in starting quarterback and backup quarterback is like Derek <laughs> Carr. And, yes. you, know, you know, we don't even know for sure. Spencer the vibes Rattler. couldn't be more different from the nerd community because like people yeah. like our circles, it's like Derek Carr is the most hated quarterback. And yeah. during the draft process, it was like Spencer Rattler kind of sneaky, sneaky horny. Yeah. 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 Um, my, my take up my my joke on Derek Carr that I have probably overused at this point is like he is the physical embodiment of throwing the ball away on fourth down. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. <laughs> which just is infuriating yeah in, like no he end. just doesn't want his stats to get to get messed up yeah um, exactly i don't know That's but so yeah he, he's just uh, again i'm not like confident in car necessarily but like the change the skill group hopefully the offensive line kind of figures it out and, and this could be a team that's like a lot better than people are expecting or you know and especially in fantasy all right. So in conclusion, these three fantasy experts recommend you target the Tennessee Titans, Arizona Cardinals, and New Orleans Saints <laughs> in your upcoming Big fantasy time. draft. First Can't round. go wrong. Yeah, yeah. Can't go wrong. Um, we've taken an hour of your time and we'll get out of here, Danny. We appreciate you being on the show with us and uh, spending some time with us, Knuckleheads. It is always a ton of fun to talk to you. Um, I have one last non-football related question for you. As mm -hmm. I am uh, an impending father any minute now, uh, do you, you have a famous bit of dad advice yeah, um, that I already know. But do you have any more dad advice for you? And maybe you share your your famous bit of dad advice. Well, with people here for people that haven't heard me say it, the uh, the song for for the big the big job of a dad early on in your baby's life, is, in my opinion, is to act as the person who steps in and soothes your baby when he's crying or she's crying. Mm -hmm. Um Cause that's like, you're you, like, you can't do a whole lot of extra other stuff kind of like, useless. It, otherwise. Yeah. <laughs> that's the, like if you can go in there and calm a situation when it's stressful, the baby's crying. It's like, we're freaking out. Like what? No, is, don't what throw do that baby out the window. Give it to me. Yeah. You know, exactly. like, being able to come in and, and sue the baby, get them to stop crying is like such a huge thing from not only just like, obviously it helps the baby, but like it helps your mental state, helps you be able to sleep, 
it helps so much. So one thing that we found and this, I'm giving all credit to Skippy, my girlfriend, she, she discovered this Misty mountains. The song from the Hobbit is like, tr it, it's like a magic. It's like a piece of magic. If you it put elixir. that on, yeah. I, I th I've gotten probably literally at this point, like hundreds of people that have hit, reached out to me and told me it's that universal. It I saw somebody, some like baby guru on Instagram posted this. <laughs> totally ripped me off but did they credit you how dare they no 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 outrageous of course not um, Cease and desist. dude but it had like two hundred thousand likes or something <laughs> like that like it's like That's truly crazy. sweeping the nation did you go through the comments looking for any to be like oh danny kelly said this oh, first so many, so many people tagged me in that um, i believe it but, believe but yeah it. it's like uh obviously i i didn't invent it but um it's a great discovery that's okay. very useful i get a ton of people still to this day this is like four years later um telling me how how useful it is so misty mountains of the hobbit turn that on when your baby's crying it tends to tends to work at a really really high rate it doesn't work for everyone i can't make any promises but i would say the hit rate is like 85 percent. that's like strong plus. that's strong. um and so check that out and then of course and i'm not making any money on that i'm just trying to help people out um the people yeah, that made the Misty yeah, Mountain yeah, song recording deal, or like a, a distribution <laughs> deal under get the table. Kickbacks, get kickbacks yeah, from the exactly. Misty Mountain folks. Your, the residual checks in the mail. Um, the other thing I would say is just learn the five S's. This is uh, from the book, uh, Happiest Baby on the Block. Again, I'm not getting any money for this. I'm just truly like, this is, in my experience, it was super useful. If I go pick up that book and the author is like your mother, I'm going <laughs> to <laughs> uh No, this guy, whoever wrote it, I can't remember his name. He's like turned this whole thing into like a whole cottage industry. He has like okay. a, a ton of products. Like he's he's doing just fine. Happiest I don't baby need on the to, block. I don't need to help him uh, by any means. I think he's a very rich person at this point. But um, yeah, he wrote a book basically on like, there's five different methods for soothing a, a crying baby that are very useful. It's all based on instincts. Like the baby wants to feel like it's in the womb. So mm -hmm. there's like rocking, I, I, obviously they're all S's. So it's like shushing, uh, swaddle. swing, swaddle. Uh, I can't remember. There's two others. Um, you once told me you became a swaddle expert. Oh, yeah, I, I took, was I was like the most competitive swaddler you could imagine. <laughs> competitive, Cal competitive Calvin, my son, swaddling. dude, we get it, that it would piss me off. He was so good at getting out of his swaddle. I couldn't tie that thing tight enough. He would just get out every single one. Just duct tape. Just wrap in duct tape. I believe me. I had that thought. I don't think that's safe. I don't think that's something they would recommend. <laughs> yeah, I think if um, CPS came to your door, they'd have questions. <laughs> Probably. <laughs> Probably a couple. But yeah, man. Uh, Look that up. At the very least, just Google the five S's for okay. soothing a crying baby. Uh, yeah, because those are super important. It's like the one thing you can do to really, really help. All right. Well, I'm I'm ready. I've got. I, sh I sent you a picture yesterday. I got my Dad Force ones on right you have now. Have them on right oh, now. Yeah. Oh, yeah. oh yeah. Are they on? Oh boy. Oh boy. Oh god. Oh there they are. He's ready. He's ready at a moment's notice. The car I'm is ready. already packed. He's got them tied. He's got them locked. Well, my best friend loaded. texted me. He's, He's like, ready. check your front door. And I'm like, are you at my front door? He doesn't live here. And uh, no, it was Amazing. these shoes. Yeah, they, I, they're awful. I hate them, but I have to wear them. So um, You have to embrace, dude, embrace dad life. I'm loving yeah. it. You're, you're already embracing it. You're halfway there. Okay. All right. Well, uh, that's going to be it for today, Danny. Thank you for uh, showing up guys. If, if we have not, this entire show has been an, an advertisement for the, the ringer fantasy football show. It's awesome. It's very funny. Even if you hate fantasy football, you will enjoy it. <laughs> um, it is, it is a must listen podcast and I don't have much time to listen to a lot of podcasts these days, but I make time for Danny and, and Danny and Craig, you guys are, are great. So we appreciate it, man. Thank you. I appreciate that. Um, yeah. Uh, check it out. Also live check shows, out the, by the way, right? Yeah. We got a live show coming up in LA. We got another live show coming up in seattle if you guys are in the, any of those at the areas crocodile uh, is that the name i heard you yeah what is, is this a club what is the crocodile uh it's a it's a really old school just like venue that has been around forever i've gone to like a lot of like a dozen shows there in my lifetime like it's like it's it's big it's a that's sort of a to do, do iconic one, seattle thing it, it did move recently which is a bummer but um you know it's it's the the as it's an institution in institution Seattle, so it's, right it's very cool that we get to go play there um but yeah check us out and we got our rankings up at the ringer.com um yeah check us out the rankings mu must have if you're playing fantasy every year um cheat sheet and then you obviously you draft based on that and you know who to blame when you're when <laughs> things don't work out right uh, and then it's not your fault yeah mm-hmm Okay, uh, we'll be back on the show tomorrow. We're going to do, uh, speaking of bits that nobody's understand, not even Danny, we're going to do a taco show tomorrow. And if you're a fan of this show for a long time, you'll know what that means. We're going to eat tacos and talk about football with Stoney and Zach um, live somewhere at a taco place here in Nashville. It's going to be fun. It's 4.30 tomorrow. 
So uh, tune in for that. If I'm not having a baby, I might not be there. We'll see. Again, I, I, can't, I can't make <laughs> oh, plans. Right. I, not gonna, making plans. I, I, may, I might the, not be there. I'm canceling the show tomorrow. It, it, without you I'm there, not there, it's like the it, bit doesn't it's make not sense. there. So you're going to do a it solo doesn't... show? Yeah. Yeah, maybe. I, well, no, we have two other well, people I, coming. I, I, but this would. entire the entire point of us eating tacos while doing this show is because they make fun of the way that I eat tacos. He that's, eats tacos. I'm gonna, Danny. I'm gonna send you this picture afterwards. This okay. is the, it's the worst. It's the worst way you don't to eat to a taco. That. I'm already ever. offended. I can tell. I'm already gonna be bad. Okay. All right. Well, we're gonna do that tomorrow. So tune in then. Uh, Danny, thank you. JT, thank you. Uh, we'll be back tomorrow. Until then, I'm your host, Easton Free. It's been the Hot Read Podcast. We'll talk to you. Later.